My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're going to do the split cycle part two. So in the la the first uh, split cycle engine I was talking about um, using a secondary piston. So you've got one cylinder here, one cylinder here and you've got a piston between the two like this and then you'll have a shared crank pin like this on a crankshaft. And I was saying that there's a port between the two of them like this and you would use that to recover some of the waste heat that you are losing. There is the alternate version of that. Split cycle basically means that the cycle of the engine, so for this it would be intake stroke, um, compression stroke, power stroke, then it'd be transfer stroke, and then it'd be the secondary power stroke, if you want to put it that, or the recovery stroke, and then the exhaust stroke. So split cycle means getting your cycle of suck, squeeze, bang, pop and splitting it up between cylinders. So it works either way. So you can have it draw air in, work like a regular engine, but then transfer the exhaust gases. You are now splitting up that cycle. So it's, it, the split cycle is this, is if you have an in and an out, and then there's a split between cylinders between the in and the out so this is the cycle going from here to here and if you split that between cylinders different cylinders to do different jobs that's a split cycle now there is another way you can do this which is have an intake stroke it then does a compression stroke and pushes it straight into this cylinder and then then it compresses so in a sense this is tur this is uh, turbo this is supercharging that's all this is this is supercharging this is using a piston pump for a supercharger um, so, in other words, part one where I did the exhaust side of things, that's basically an efficiency system. That's about recovering energy from the exhaust gases. Why is that a shit idea? Well, because this, this, and all the rest of it, and all of this, and the cylinder head that goes with it weighs a shitload, costs a load, and there's more things to go wrong because there's more components, where you replace this just with a turbo snail. You know what I mean? Jobs are good and cost less. Less things to go wrong, hallelujah, away you go. And it's also a reduction in size as well, you've got to remember that. If you have to stack, if you have four cylinders and then three or two or one, it's size considerations. The engine's just got a whole lot bigger now. So if you're going to use this as a mechanical supercharger, same kind of thing. A turbo does both. So it also pumps air in if you use it as a turbo, not like a turbo compound engine. So you're using exhaust gases in, so you're using energy recovery to then pump that back in to your, basically into your engine. So this again is a waste of fucking time. And this is why it won't lift off. This is why you won't see them in mass production or massive numbers of mass production. It won't replace normal engines because it's a shit idea. You've got another cylinder head, another cylinder, another piston, another conrod, more complexity, bigger bulk, more things to go wrong. The cost is fucking astronomical because you need more camshafts, rockers, valves and everything. This thing, our turbo snail, does both. It recovers energy and uses that to pump it back into the engine. This is the happy medium. This is absolutely fucking awesome because you get more power by recovering lost waste energy. So you are more efficient in a sense. And this is why t small one liter engines or 900 cc engines and tur diesels use turbos because they are recovering energy that would otherwise just piss out, you know, and kill a feminist, you know, and then it's using that to then recover that and recover that system. So instead of using more fuel, you can use less fuel and basically just use that efficiency to use that eat into that efficiency slightly to bring the power back up to normal levels instead of having a bigger engine. You know what I mean? So you can have a smaller engine that produces the same kind of power. A brilliant example this is a 1.6 litre. Uh, Formula One engine. Someone did point out the restricted, uh, the basically run at 12,000 RPM now. I didn't know that. I don't watch Formula One. I don't care. I do care about the engine, just not Formula One. It's shite. But, um, yes, so the, uh, where was I? Yeah, there you go. There's a, an engine that is using all the recovery systems that are available these days, but it's using a turbo to do both to boost power. But you can also actually, in a sense, for that power output, you can use less fuel because you're recovering some of that energy to do some work that otherwise a supercharger would have to do because you want more power. 
So even if you use this as basically a supercharger to pump uh, into this other cylinder, you're wasting your time because it's just too much of a recovery system. You know what I mean? You are using, you, you just go turbo, you just go turbo. And this is why turbos are fucking everywhere and have been around for a long, long time. And why stupid stuff like this just basically hasn't been produced because there is no benefit. Hey, hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.